This week, Figma released their little big updates with 32 updates to Figma. And here is every single one. The first update is on canvas preview. So when you go to your blending modes, you hover over them and it shows you on the canvas instead of having to actually select them to see what they do. The second new feature is luminance mask support. So we can use an object's brightness to create a mask. So now if I select both of those, right click, use as mask, you'll see we have this option here for luminance. The next new feature is multi-select search. So if I go to the search here, you'll see that I have searched Twitch card and I have several of them here. So I can multi-select the ones I need. So I want all of them. So I'm gonna hold command and click or I can hold shift and click to grab them. And then I can update them all at once. So I'll just update these to a red color card instead of purple. Next up is leading trim. So now we have more options with our text to style them. So if I select my text here and click the three little dots, we now have the vertical trim option. And if I select that, you'll see it removes that space that is above and below our type by default. And you can see how it affects this inside of a, another auto layout for a button. And you have more customization with your vertical trim. The next feature is the ability to start lists that don't start with number one. So if I just start a list at number three, I can now do so. In the past, we always had to start with one. Next up is hanging punctuation. So when I select my quote here, I go to my three little dots. I now have the option under details to select the hanging option, which will put that outside of my text box. And this can obviously help with alignment of typography. The seventh new feature is the ability to search in a new tab on the desktop app. Mine currently is not working, but when you open a new tab, you will now have the ability to search and find files a little bit easier. Next up is tab hover previews. So now you can see the thumbnails of your design files when you hover over the tab. There's now haptics on desktop app for Mac. So you can actually have haptics when you emote in FigJam, which you can turn on or off in preferences. Now when you're leaving comments, you can actually have links. So if I just add a comment here, Simply select the text you want to add a link to and hit Command K or Control K and then paste in your URL. Now we have a link that our collaborators can easily select. The next one's a pretty good quality of life. It's batched comments with notification emails. I actually noticed this one today with a client left four comments in one of our files and I only got one email. So it just consolidates the email notifications, which is great. The 12th update is just an easy update to move projects around. You can simply just right click on a project and move it to a different location, just making it a little easier to stay organized in Figma. Number 13 is a pretty big one for components. We now have the option to expose nested instances. So I have a master button component here that has a few different properties like setting the state and the text input. And then I have another component, which is my card template. And inside of that, I have that button component. So with this card selected, I can go to properties now and hit nested instances, and it will allow me to select my button. So now if I go to use that card in my design and I drag out an instance of that, with the card selected, I now have access to my button properties. So I can change the text from here and customize that component nested inside this component. Another component update is for preferred instances. So now if I select my master component for this button, I can go to icons and click on the edit property. I can now set preferred values. So if I just click the plus here, I want the home to be a preferred option, add arrow right. So now when I drag out an instance of that button and I go to select my icon, I can see my preferred list here and easily change my icon with this list. We now have snapping to aspect ratio. So as I'm scaling an image, you'll see it starts to snap. So when I get to the perfect aspect ratio, it'll just snap for me there. And if I want to disable that while I'm scaling this, I can hit control and you'll see it no longer snaps. So that just helps us align these images with a better aspect ratio. We now have better pasting improvements. So if I copy this image here, I'll copy that. Here in my design, I have this rectangle with an image fill and a color overlay on top. I'm gonna select that image fill and command V to paste it. And so the image actually gets replaced, leaving all the other fills alone now. Another small change to images during image editing. So right now I'm adjusting the crop on this Fox. I can actually use my align tools and move this rectangle around, even though I'm editing an image. Number 18 is aligned to nested instances. So here I have a button nested in this card and I can select another element and then use my alignment to align to that nested element. We can now remove rulers really easily by right clicking 
and remove all vertical or horizontal rulers. And you can also hide them from here or just use the shortcut. Update 20 is library update improvements. So if I drag out an instance from another design system and put it here in my file, then I go to that design system and I make a change. So let's change this to a yellow color and I'll just publish those changes. Back in my Figma file down here in the bottom, it says component updates available. Now I can review these. And when I actually select this, it will give me a preview and I can also overlay this and change the opacity to see how the change affects the card as well. And of course I have my side-by-side -side preview. So I wanna make this, so I'll update my instance. Update 21 is a small SVG import bug fix. Clip paths are now supported, so you'll no longer have that weird bug when you import an SVG. 22 is a new fetch API for plugins. So if you are a Figma plugin creator, you can now make requests easier. 23 is a create image sync API for plugins making it easier to create images with your plugins. 24, the photo booth widget shows mirror image. So when you're taking a FigJam selfie, it now shows the mirror image. In FigJam, we can now change shapes to transparent. So if you go to the fill, you have the transparent tab and it will just make those slightly transparent. Another update to FigJam, if you go to the arrow next to the shape, you can actually set the default shape color. So the next time you drag out a shape, it'll be that color. There's now a sticky note animation on sticky notes. You can see that little page curl there as I drag it in. So now you know it is not a rectangle, it is a sticky note. 28 is a pretty big one for prototyping. We have sticky scrolling. So I have this search field here and I want this to stick as the user scrolls through this design. So with that selected, I can go to the prototype tab. Under position, I can set to sticky, stop at the top edge. And when I select this and preview it, you can see as I start scrolling, it sticks to the top of my frame. Figma also released a playground file for this. So if you wanna learn more about sticky scrolling, they have a community file. But of course, I'll probably be releasing videos on several of these updates here in the near future. So make sure you subscribe for more content like that coming soon. We now have older devices that we can prototype with. So if I select my frame, go to prototype, show prototype settings, we have the Macintosh 120K, I preview that. We can now view our prototype and this older device. With update 30, we now have background blur effects on overlays. So here on my overlay, I have a background blur of 20. When I go to my prototype here, when I click on this image, it opens that overlay and you can see it blurs everything behind this overlay. We now have the ability to link prototypes across pages and they open in the same tab. So I have two pages here, one for an iPhone and one for an Apple Watch. So what I wanna happen is when the user selects this Apple Watch app, it opens up the prototype flow for the iPhone. So I'll just open the iPhone flow. I can go up to my tab and right click and copy the link. Then I can close that. Then on my watch, I can simply select my app icon, add a new interaction on tap. I want to open link and then I'll just paste that link in. So here on my Apple Watch, when I click on my app icon, it launches the iPhone app flow. And finally, for update 32, we have multi-create prototyping. So if I select each one of these menus from these different frames, go to my prototype tab, I can easily drag out a noodle from all of them at once to the menu. So when the user taps on that, I want them all to go to this frame. So we can easily create larger prototypes much quicker without having to repeatedly drag out those noodles. And so that's all 32 updates that released with Little Big Updates 2023. I'll have the release notes linked down in the description, as well as the community file that Figma released with this that goes over all of the updates in detail. So if you're interested in either of those, they'll be linked down in the description. Here's another video you might like, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this every single week. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.